Guys, what's going on and welcome back to a brand new video and today we are going to be remaking Roger Schmidt's 4231. I made this tactic in FM22, it was massively popular and a lot of you guys seem to be wanting it inside of FM23 so I have recreated it for you. We're going to get right into it now. If you are enjoying the tactics that I'm posting so far this year, be sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications and do stick around because there's a new series just around the corner. So let's kick things off then with, by the way, we are testing with former sides and his current side, Benfica. And a team that he was involved in is going to be PSV. Now, obviously, one thing you're going to notice right away, this video was made before Gakpo's departure to Liverpool. So um, I will make sure future tactic tests from this point onwards are up to date with the databases. But in this test here, it was absolutely incredible. We actually managed to win the Dutch League, the Dutch Cup, the Cruyff Shield, scoring 140 goals and only conceding 12. Gakpo being the star man of the season, ironically enough. Um, Cody Gakpo, 43 goals, 8.41 match rating and 39 assists. Really the key talisman in this PSV side. Do let me know in the comments what player you think PSV have either got coming up or a player that they could possibly get to try and replace some of Gakpo's influence in this team. But as you can see, it's a very easy title win, to be honest with you. Um, again, there are a couple of teams in here which possibly could compete for this title, being Ajax and Feyenoord. So, I mean, it shouldn't be as this easy, to be honest, but we've just had an incredible season. Going into the data hub, then Team Attacking, 4.12 goals, which is, to be honest, expected because we have got really good attack and players especially with the addition or kind of keeping Gakpo when we tested it at the time and 90% pass completion is a standout stat it does show a lot a little bit more, a lot about this tactic and sort of what it's about and how it performs in terms of team defending 0.35 so very defensively solid as well again it could be a mix of you know we are one of the better teams in this division and the only two teams that caused us some issue um, or could have caused us some issue would have been Ajax and Feyenoord and luckily we sort of breeze past both of them when we did play them. So the first test has been done, but we've still got a few others to talk through and to, you know, analyze. So let's get into the next one. And that is going to be with Bayer Leverkusen. And this is the one that impressed me probably the most because we took a, you know, a Bundesliga side, which, you know, are okay. They're a decent side, but you, you'd probably favor the likes of Bayern, Dortmund, Leipzig, possibly Gladbach over them. Um, Frankfurt, possibly with their recent European success. Some good teams in the Bundesliga, and we've come out and absolutely dominated it for fun. Um, Bayern have had, obviously, quite an off-season. Um, way more than what you'd usually expect, but they're going to take it nevertheless. But even without the Bundesliga into account, we've actually managed to win the Champions League against Manchester City, and that is the real standout one for me, because it just shows that how good this tactic actually is. It does perform really well against the top sides. Most 43 ones do do this as sort of a trait because it is so balanced, but a very good result there. Also winning the Pockel against Frankfurt with Patrick Schlick coming in with 72 goals. A player which not many United fans probably like me saying this, but I'd be somewhat interested in this guy. Um, it, it's fairly consistent in the Bundesliga, maybe a little bit of a stretch to say to, to a United standard player, but in my opinion, why not? Um, Callum hudson Adoy 8 match rate in 8.03, fairly solid as well, and also contributing with 27 assists, so a good spell for him in this sort of test. 116 goals scored and only 20 conceded. And if we go into the data hub, team attacking, 3.41, so a little bit less than what we were scoring for PSV, but obviously it is a little bit of a tougher division. 89% pass completion, so still around that 90% mark, and team defending, 0.59, expected to be higher than what it would be in a Dutch league, because you've got the likes of Dortmund, Bayern, Leipzig, Frankfurt, all these other teams that can obviously score goals past you, but still very solid, you know, just over half a goal conceded per game, but we are scoring 3.41, so it definitely does make up for it. So again, that is two for two. We are 100% happy with the test, sorry, with the test and results. We then go over to Salzburg, and this is one which we definitely should be winning. I know, obviously, you know, when I recreate managers' tactics, I don't always test with lesser teams because when I recreate a manager, I always try my best to use teams 
that he has been associated with because it just makes the tactic a bit more of a personal touch. When I make my own tactics, I test with a variety of different standards. But this one is going to be Salzburg. And do you know what? It is an impressive season. We got to the quarterfinals of the Champions League with this side. Where we did match up against Bayer Leverkusen. Obviously, I do test on the same save, as you can see up here. So that is the reason why we got eliminated in that. It would have been interesting to see how far we would have got in this tournament if I was, you know, doing it on separate saves. But Benjamin Sesko, obviously a man that is going to RB Leipzig. Super excited about that. Scoring 81 goals. It's going to be Akafor with 28 assists. But this division, as expected, was a complete walk in the park. 98 goal difference, 61 points compared to second place is 40. I mean, there wasn't really much competition at all in this division. We also did win the Austrian FA Cup. Again, to be expected, in my opinion, 113 goals scored and only 15 conceded. In terms of the data hub, then, team attacking, 3.53 and the 90%. They're the two stats we're really paying attention to, um, especially on this sort of testing, because the pass completion should be relatively high because it is designed to be like that. And team defending, 0.47. So very, very impressed with that. Across all three of the tests so far, we've actually, you know, successfully not conceded a goal a game. Um, obviously, that is a statistic based across the whole season. So there are going to be a game here and there where you are going to concede a goal, if not two. But on an average, this is sort of how it breaks it down. By the way, if you guys do want to see me um, feature more stats, so possibly the general performance, any of this stuff or anything else, do leave right now a comment on what you want to see the stats because I will happily include as much or as little as you want to see. But let's hop over to the last test, which is going to be with current side Ben Fika. And Ben Fika, I mean... I'm actually a really big fan of this team. I've rebuilt them recently and I had a ton of fun doing it. They've actually got some good players, the likes of obviously Goncal Ramos, Enzo, probably going to end up at Chelsea now, Neres, and the list does go on. And we actually had a really successful season with Benfica as well. Absolutely dominating the Portuguese league, finishing, you know, quite significantly higher than the likes of Sporting, Braga, Porto, you know, so it's a very convincing, very convincing season. We got all the way to the semi-finals of the Champions League. We won the Portuguese Cup against Braga and also the Portuguese League Cup. We scored 109 goals and only conceded 14. Goncal Ramos with 38 goals. Enzo Fernandes picking up the highest match rating and Neres contributing with 25 assists. And we're going to go into the data hub now. Team attacking 3.21. Again, relatively around that 90% um, pass completion mark, which again, is exactly what we want to be seeing and team defending 0.41 so very impressed with that and how this has sort of worked how this is planned out because all of the testing has been really really good so i'm going to pick out a game if not a couple of games and we're going to watch the highlights or mainly the dogs because that's a bit of a staple in these videos again right now i know i've asked a couple of times but if you do want to comment what you want to see in these tactic videos possibly um do you want to go back to seeing the 2d sort of um footage any of this and do let me know and then what i'll do is i'll run a community poll and that'll be the decider because i'll let you guys decide how you want the videos to be made because if i'm watching a video i'd love to have that influence too so let's go ahead and watch some of the goals from let's do the champions league final so we're going to treat you this episode. We're going to show you two games, and that's because the Champions League final only was a 2-1 win, so there's not too many goals. So what I'm going to do is I'm also going to show you the Pockle final, and there was actually quite a comfortable final, a 4-0 win. The first goal is hudson Adoy floating the ball into the box, who loops it into Tar, and he sort of chips it over the keeper with quite an elegant header, to be honest with you. hudson Adoy here picking up the ball into back air, back into hudson Adoy having such a good season. Bit lucky there with a the rebound. Is he going to square it? He is into Schlick, and it is an easy tap-in, and that is obviously the link-up we were so used to seeing with hudson Adoy and also Patrick. We go again here with Hudson into back air, Back in the middle into Demabray, a beautiful ball through to the star man, a great first touch and an elegant strike into the bottom right. You're not going to stop that. Fantastic goal and that makes it 3-0. One more goal in this tie. It's not over yet. hudson Adoy dominating this left-hand side. A ball, he's going to hit that first time. He takes a touch and tees it up into the top left corner and it was a very easy final to be honest a little bit you know of an embarrassment for the other team but a game which we definitely deserve to win we dominated every single stat line possession xg shots on target shots in general and frankfurt i mean they are a good team i i, I gassed them up at the start of this video and i remain like that they are a good team they obviously won europa league but they are a decent side but just in this in this one save we done 
It weren't performing. So a very disappointing final for them. And we then found Manchester City in the Champions League final in what was a 2-1 game. So a lot much of a closer game. And luckily we did come out on top, which is always good to see. It's going to be hudson Adoy taking a little touch back into Bakke, into Palacios. Quite a good team we've got here. And a wonder ball into Diaby. Cancelo could have intercepted that, I feel. But Diaby does get just ahead of him, wins the ball and tucks it in. Man City on the break here. There were Kyle Walker into Bernardo Silva. A great overlap and run. Kyle Walker into Haaland. We did get split open there. And it's quite a, I mean, it's a beautifully constructed goal from Manchester City. But it wasn't enough. We did bounce back. It's going to be Verts on the ball here. A ball all the way across Cancelo. Not having the best performance here at all. Back across into Schlick and Edison just sort of, I don't know what he's doing there. It's absolutely abysmal from Edison. And that sort of gives us the Champions League. But Man City, you know, there are some underperforming players in this side, in this game in particular. Kyle Walker having a little bit of a masterclass at right back, dropping an 8.1. And also Haaland having a decent game. It was a game again, which, you know, to be honest, on this occasion, we are talking Manchester City. We did hold our own in terms of possession, which is quite a big achievement against a team like Man City. They did have more XG and they did have more shots in general, but obviously we were very solid defensively. We didn't concede too many and we scored when it, when it mattered. And that's exactly what champions do. So let's break down this fantastic Roger Schmidt tactic. So guys, this is going to be Roger Schmidt's 4-2-3-1 FM23. Before we do break down this fantastic tactic, be sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe, it's completely free and it helps the channel grow massively. And also do get involved in the community polls, which you can find on the community page on the channel, because this is where you can vote on what videos you're going to be seeing in the upcoming future. But let's get right into this and break it down. So we're going to start things off, obviously, on this side. Positive mentality in possession. You want a fairly narrow attack and width, pass into space, play out of defense, shorter on the pass on directness, a slightly higher tempo, be more expressive and mixed crosses. In transition, you want nothing selected here. Counter, distribute quickly, distribute to the center backs and take short goal kicks. Out of possession, you want a standard defensive line, a high press line of engagement, much more often, prevent short goalkeeper distribution and get stuck in. Now, I'm going to quickly say, if you want to 100% replicate Roger Schmidt's tactics, I would probably have this on a higher line. But the thing is, in FM, that's quite a risky approach, in my opinion, especially when holiday simulating. Um, so I didn't do it because at the end of the day, I want to replicate a tactic as much as I can. But it also has to get results because I know you guys download tactics to get results. Obviously, you have to put your own tweaks on it as you go and as you play your games. But that's the only thing I would look to change in terms of 100% replicate. And another thing, if you're getting too many bookings, you're not very happy with it. You can take Get Stuck In off, but that is there purely because that is a sort of style that we used to see him. But we're going to kick things off then from, let's go from goalkeeper up the pitch this time. Sweeper keeper on defend, no instructions, completely basic because the goalkeeper on a seat, He's not a sweeper keeper in the sense he comes out, he collects the loose balls out of the box, touches it with his feet. He's just, I want a sweeper keeper, but nothing too extravagant, you know? And that worked really well. As a right back, you want a full back on automatic, aim the crosses at the center, shoot less often and sit narrower. The left back is going to be crossed from byline, shoot less often and aim the crosses at the center. There's two central defenders, both on defend, by the way. Stay wider, shoot less often, dribble less and hold position. And it's exactly the same for the right-hand sided one. Here in midfield, we've got a deep line playmaker on support. Shoot less often, take more risks and hold position. And we've got a centre mid on automatic. Pass it shorter, take more risks, dribble more and hold position. Going over to the left-hand side, we've got an inverted winger on support. Take more risks, hold up ball, run from position, sit narrower, dribble more and cut inside with the ball. And on the right, we've got take more risks, hold up ball, shoot more often, get further forwards, run from position, sit narrower, tackle harder, dribble more and cut inside with the ball. The last two plays are going to be the advanced playmaker on attack, run from position, shoot less often, dribble more and take risks. That leaves us with one more player, which is going to be the pressing forward on attack, take more risks, shoot more often, Roam from position, move into channels, close down more, and tackle harder. So this is going to be the Roger Smith 
completely broken down, guys, this tactic. Um, it is quite similar to my FM22 one, just a little tweak here and there. Now, if you guys have copied this click for click, I do appreciate it because it does mean a lot when you guys do stick around to see how I made the tactic and go sort of break it down. But if you want an alternative, you can find this tactic on the FM Scout website, where you literally see the same thumbnail that you see on this video on that website. You can download it from there. But that is going to be it for today, guys. Hope you guys have enjoyed this breakdown. If you have, be sure to leave a like on the video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one.